come over back here to add input and image sequence singer. So if you had a PNG sequence that you wanted to bring in here, um, you could select the um, first image of that and it'll bring in the whole sequence. Um, so you could use that as a stinger. A stinger you could also use with a video. Um, so you don't need to worry about needing an image sequence for it. But if you wanted to bring an image sequence, you could do that here. Um, video delay, this will let you take any feed that you want and bring it on a delay that you define it to be. Again, if you're making this really big here, you are using your hardware to do that. So you want to be aware of how much caching you're trying to put on one machine at a time. So if you don't have a ton of RAM, you ha won't have a ton of time that you could delay on this. But it looks like here I have a maximum of 120 seconds of delay that you could put on. Um, so this is good in case you need like a delayed video input or something like that. And then you can pick what codec you're saving it in, which of course probably impacts the wear and tear on your machine. But yeah, that's a good situation in case you need to um, delay something. Over here is how you could bring an image in. So you could just browse for something. I'm just gonna go here like that. Okay, and you bring in an image. Something to know is vMix prefers objects that are in 16.9 formats. Um, so right now it worked out because this is a 16.9 image as the source, um, but sometimes it doesn't come in that way. You might be able to see if you could get away with widescreen without stretching it too much. So you will set that here. Typically I like it on widescreen instead of normal, but um, you can have it maintain its source settings here. I like as a rule for, especially when we're asking clients who are making their own graphics for us, to compose it on a 1080 frame where they want it to land so we don't have to. We can always adjust it in vMix, which I'll get through some input settings later. Um, but I like knowing where they think they want it to be, where a good starting place is, instead of just giving us a random asset that's cropped to the actual content of the asset. I'd rather get it composed on a 1080 frame um, exactly where we want it to land, uh, because that avoids us accidentally stretching it in a way that it can't um, do. Um, so over here, I have some settings. Uh, here I could see what resolution it is that we're pulling in. So yeah, it is a 69, it's a 4K, so it's getting downscaled right now to fit, and then I don't need any de-interlacing. So yeah, um, well, once I go through all the inputs, I'm gonna go to all the input settings. PowerPoint, if I have PowerPoint installed on this computer, I could bring a PowerPoint in. Typically, I don't like doing that just because it's one less program I have to run on the same computer doing vMix, um, but I will get slide control over it. It just doesn't do like animations or any fancy transitions or anything like that that well. Um, but so that's like another reason to use PowerPoint as an external device into like an HDMI to SDI converter and then into the capture card. Uh, but you could do a PowerPoint directly on here um, like this. Color input, this is really great in case you just need some color to test with or something like that, or if you need a plate for a background on alpha graphic or something like that, um, you could select what color it is here. Uh, I could also put bars in if you want bars for testing, and I could make a transparent input. This is really critical for when we're doing graphics, um, so that way we could leave a DSK on in a switcher and just send it pure transparency um, or pure alpha. Um, th those are kind of used interchangeably. Um, and then um, that way we could have the DSK open the whole time on the switcher, but then the graphics operator is in control of clearing it. Um, but and we'll get into with our transition types of fade and merge here, um, because um, how vMix handles alpha can be a little funky sometimes. Um, so we'll look, we'll review fading versus merging, um, but that's a really important for when we're doing it with a transparent color input. So next, audio. This is an audio file. You can bring an MP3 wave file, drag it in there. You get normal playback shuttle control. Um, audio input, this is if you have an actual device you're plugging in. So if we had a Dante line here, we could pick this and then pick exactly which channels they are. Um, you could also route any of the buses back into vMix uh, via this way. Um, and I could bring in whatever my NDI virtual input is uh, over here as well. So like I could do that too. Uh, pull that here. Um, I think I installed NDI on here. Yeah, so if I have virtual input running in the background, which will do a lot for sending program feeds to producers who want to watch on a Zoom or something like that, we'll send them the NDI feed. So you, to do that, you just right click on NDI virtual input here, um, pick what source you want it to come from. So I could pick any of these guys. I, so you could see anything light up there, and then that whatever's routed into that virtual input will show up as our line NDI audio input. So that's a cool way in case we need some extra I.O. that we don't have available to us. <laughs>